13 is a Catherine Hardwick's coming of age movie that is like no other. And not because of my favorite blue filter, but because it hits you like a ton of bricks. It's a well-known fact that this movie is based, or I should say loosely based, on Nikki Reed's teenage years. I emphasize loosely, but... Um... <laughs> Catherine Hardwick knew Nikki Reed closely because she dated her father for four years. After the breakup, however, Catherine decided to remain friends with the kids, Nikki and her older brother, since she adored them greatly. Quote, I still planned to be in the kids' lives, so I started going to their mom to get my hair cut. End quote. Like Tracy's mother in the movie, Reed's mother was a hairdresser who worked from home. At one point, Nikki started to change dramatically, and of course, that was related to the most magnificent time in our lives called puberty. Everyone would want to come back to that period, am I right? Oh no, 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 no. I'm so glad that age is over. So glad. Nikki Reed talked about it herself, quote, I remember being really angry at my mom all the time. There was a Thanksgiving when I was literally on the floor screaming and crying. People were taking furniture out of my room to use it for the table. I was off the dial, dramatic, angry, and mean, end quote. Hardwick noticed these changes too. Quote, she just cared about if she looked right and if she fit the look for the school. She'd wake up at 4.30 in the morning, two hours of hair and makeup, the perfect J-Lo ironing her hair. Her and her best friend did this whole thing, and that's before seventh grade. That's pretty extreme. End quote. Nikki's parents had no idea what to do with her rebelliousness, yet they figured that Hardwick had a good influence on her. So Catherine and Nikki hang out for days and weeks at a time. That's when Hardwick decided to channel all of Nikki's energy into something positive. So they started writing a script together. A script for the film about teenagers. This movie had a huge impact on me and I believe on a lot of people, especially teen girls, because it was made specifically for them. 13 tells the story of a girl named Tracy. She's a good student, she has nice friends, she writes poems for God's sake. He was crippled, but only his body was cracked. It's not simple, nor is it an easy matter to explain. Her family situation at first seems okay. Her mom, Melanie, or Mel for short, is caring and loving. Her older brother is not a bully or a prick. But you soon discover that her mom is actually a recovering alcoholic who is trying to keep the family afloat by doing people's hair. And her parents are divorced and her father is always busy with his new job and new family. Even when shit goes down and Mel asks for his help because she thinks she's losing her child, he just says he can't deal with it. I need you to take her for Mel. a while. Are you hearing me here? I can't. One more thing that adds to the family dynamic is the fact that Mel has an on-and-off boyfriend, Brady, who is a recovering drug addict. Do you mind if I put this stuff in your garage? Tracy reacts to Brady in a very peculiar way. When she finds his clothes in the dryer, it feels like she's going to have a panic attack. She's psychologically distraught. It's not as simple as, Mama hit your boyfriend because I'm an angsty teenager. Mom, his clothes should not be here. You promised Mason and you promised me. Through flashbacks, you see that Brady was using drugs in the presence of Tracy and her brother, so you can only guess what else Tracy saw in her own house. But most importantly, Tracy self-harms. 13 was probably one of the first films where I saw self-harm being shown in such a raw manner the secrecy of it all, the shame afterwards. So already given these circumstances, it's not surprising that Tracy starts spiraling in the wrong direction. The film touches on the topic of societal pressures girls experience when they are bombarded with sexy advertisements that tell them that their physical appearance is more important. We live in a society that over-sexualizes teen girls, but when girls start acting sexually as a result, they are shamed and blamed and punished. When Tracy gets teased for her clothes at school, she is determined to do a makeover on herself. Her role model is a popular girl named Evie, and Tracy is ready to do whatever it takes to get into her circle of friends, even steal money. Holy shit, guys! Evie and Tracy's friendship is complex and intense, swinging between codependency and rivalry for attention. This extreme range of feelings starting from affection and love and ending with jealousy and hatred is very specific to female friendships, and 13 captures it fully. I mean, the movie starts with a very, I don't want to say violent, but physical scene between two girls. They're hitting each other harder and harder while laughing. And this alone captures the essence of the whole movie. <laughs> because I love my women and girls unhinged, I'll rate Evie and Tracy as totally unhinged based on their mental states. Tracy and Evie do everything together, they even make up their own language. Something that a lot of kids do, probably not at 13, for me it's kind of late, but at the same time it acts as a wake-up call for viewers. These are literal kids in front of them. 
Sometimes when people see such an intense connection on screen between two girls, it's easier for them to explain it through homosexuality. I personally have never thought of 13 as a queer coded movie, even though I'm always one of the first people to scream gay at the screen. The two girls practicing kissing on the bed is not enough for me. I do agree that codependent friendships are very complicated and the sexual and romantic element can be present. You really don't understand if you want to be that person or you want to date them or you want to kill them. Maybe all three, who knows. Evan Rachel Wood talked about the romantic side of Tracy and Evie's relationship a little bit because of her own experiences. She came out as bisexual in 2011. Girlfriends, that is your first love, love sort yeah. of. I mean, they always kind of, it kind of mirrors that, right? Like, it's so intense, those feelings you have mm -hmm. as a young girl for other girls. And then you you broke out and you were like, well, actually, um... Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, yes, th those were all there. And also this, like, hidden sexuality that I had not explored yet at all. So 13 triggers different things on different people. Maybe for you it's repressed sexuality, and for some other person it's toxic friendship. Tracy craves Evie's life and Evie, on the contrary, wants what Tracy has, and that is a loving mother. Tracy doesn't want to be coddled by her mother anymore, she wants to be cool and popular with girls and boys. She seeks her own autonomy and acceptance from others and feels suffocated by her mom. Mom, what is it with you and poking me? Mom, stop! When she comes to Evie's place, she thinks it's very cool that Evie is allowed to drink beer in front of her cousin and guardian Brooke, not yet understanding that Evie is always on her own, without parents completely ignored and abandoned. While Tracy is trying to escape from motherly love, Evie is running towards it. That's why she literally leeches onto Tracy's family, specifically her mom Mel. When Tracy doesn't want to kiss her mom goodnight, Evie does it instead of her. When Mel DIYs jeans for Tracy, but Tracy doesn't take them, you see Evie wearing them the next day. Evie is manipulative and charming, but she's also a kid who just wants to be loved. So her final wish is for Mel to adopt her, which doesn't happen. You're not gonna adopt me, Mel? Evie storms outside after hearing this news and cries in the corner. She's just a lost girl. Evie tells a lot of stories about the abuse she's endured at the hands of her cousin's boyfriend. All of these stories are not backed up by any evidence. However, there's one scene in the movie that implies that maybe something did happen. When Tracy applies sunscreen on Evie's back, she notices a relatively big scar. She doesn't question Evie about it and we never see it again after that. I heard she's got a huge scar on her back from when she tried to save her baby brother from a fire. Oh. Mel is a hippie mom. She doesn't forbid her kids from doing anything. At one point, Tracy's brother tells her that Mel knows he smokes pot. Mel notices the changes in her daughter, but she has no idea how to deal with it. She tries very hard to be the cool mom. She drives girls around so they can go shopping. She allows Evie to stay at her house. She's like the hot big sister. <laughs> she has so much love to give, but it only pushes Tracy further and further away from her, building up the tension to the story's climactic ending. When I watched 13 for the first time when I was myself, like 12, I was very angry at Evie. She gets cornered and questioned by her guardian about the drugs, and she puts all the blame on Tracy. Tracy is the bad one, she's the liar and a drug addict, not me. And I thought to myself, how dare she ruin the life of such a good girl? Evie is such a bitch. Upon rewatch, though, I just wanted to hug everyone because they're all so broken inside. The ending is so real and honest that you can't help but boil your eyes out with all the characters. And even Evie doesn't look like a villain as she starts crying too, which apparently wasn't in the script. It was so heavy that I was just crying too and, and angry at, at, at Holly for, at, for being a mom for the first time and why isn't she Evie's mom and why am I not in that and I remember, you know, Catherine was really good at, um, Catherine makes everything feel very real, mm -hmm. um, at times probably too real. <laughs> In the end, a mother's love wins, as you see Tracy kind of surrender into Mel's arms. And for me, this is one of the most difficult scenes to sit through. I can't do this, it hits home way too hard. And the last shot of Tracy screaming while she's spinning on the merry-go-round is so haunting. It's the best ending in the history of cinematography, hands down. When 13 first came out, it shocked a lot of people. Mostly parents, let's be honest. But when you watch the movie, nothing super crazy happens. It's not like you're watching Ken Park or Kids. Most things are implied. In one scene, Evie is coming from the back of the store with a guy wiping her lips. In another, a guy unzips his pants after which everything fades to black. The power of 13 is not in the content itself, the sex and the drugs. It's in a way how these things are handled and portrayed. It's not glamorized or romanticized. It's not on your face. It's not wrapped in a pretty paper. You see normal average girls who look like you, and you slowly start falling deeper and deeper into the abyss with them. As Hardwick explained, quote, the movie feels almost more extreme than it really is. 
Because really, the girls don't do anything besides kiss and dance, but you still feel a little bit more shocked than is really called for. I think partly because the actors are so powerful and the way we filmed it, like you really kind of feel like you're in it." End quote. It does feel like you're watching a homemade video gone wrong. I'm not sure if 13 still holds up today since internet completely turned the world on its head and even though the issues might still be the same, the social media makes all our lives a little bit worse. 13 gave people a unique perspective of what teen girls go through directly from a teenager herself. And that's the beauty of it.